For a while now, I've been wanting to cover some of the, let's say, more bizarre urban legends I've come across throughout my travels. Because there sure are a lot of them, and some of them are so weird, outlandish, and fantastic that I can't help but laugh while also wondering how on earth they came to be in the first place. So, this week, let's take a look at one of the more fascinating legends I've run into recently. The legend of the Meiji Shrine Rubber Man. This dude who looks just like an Ultraman villain is known as the Meiji Shrine Gomuningen in Japanese, which roughly translates to Rubber Man in English. If that name makes you think of One Piece, then you're not alone, and this was apparently done by design. The Meiji Shrine Rubber Man is perhaps most famous for this single photo that was published in the March 15, 2007 edition of Tokyo Sports Newspaper. You might be wondering why a sports newspaper is publishing weird photos of urban legends, but Tokyo Sports has a certain reputation for publishing fake stories and articles. You can think of it as something like the outrageous tabloids we see in the West, that like to publish things like Bigfoot or UFO sightings, but they also post sports news at the same time. The headline for this article reads, Yokai, Rubber Man, and purports to be an exclusive photo of the creature paying his respects at Meiji Shrine. At any rate, while this wasn't the first ever account of the Rubber Man, it was certainly one of the key moments that helped make this odd creature an infamous urban legend all over the country. A strange green figure in a long coat, seen hunched over at Meiji Shrine, as though bowing in reverence to the gods before entering their holy ground. Who or what was this figure, and how did he become such a famous urban legend? Well, let's take a look. While the idea of rubber men is certainly not unique to Japan, the first instance of this particular figure appears to have come from the television show Downtown DX. I was unable to track down the exact date for the episode, but it aired prior to the Tokyo Sports article, which would place it sometime around the mid-2000s. There, actor Matoba Koji spoke of seeing a yokai with green skin when he was in the car with some friends in Sagamihara City, Kanagawa Prefecture. It was mixed in with the crowd. How a green figure that looks like rubber can mix in with a crowd and nobody notices is beyond me, but that was the story. This was soon followed by a flood of reports to the show from viewers all around the country who claimed to have seen the same thing. It appeared that there wasn't a single rubber man, but rather numerous rubber men all over the country. And interestingly, they came not only in green, but in numerous colours, such as blue and pink as well. There were even rubber women and rubber children, not to mention elderly rubber folk. A whole society of colourful rubber beings right under our noses. Another actor, veteran Ishizaka Koji, then stepped up to the plate and claimed to have had an encounter with a rubber man himself too. I saw a rubber man while I was driving and waiting at the traffic light one day, he claimed. Having been backed by two famous actors, more and more reports of rubber men flooded the internet. And if you remember the story of the Chisai Ojisan, or Tiny Old Man from Toshiden, this was soon followed by numerous celebrities and talents also sharing their stories of encounters with rubber men as well just like what happened with the tiny old man fad. Can't miss a good opportunity to jump in on the latest fad, after all. By this point, the rubber man was nothing more than a story. Nobody had any proof that these colourful men who looked like rubber existed, and there were certainly no photos of them either. Just eyewitness reports that could have easily been made up. But then... The Tokyo Sports came along in 2007 and published a picture that claimed to be the first real proof that, yes, rubber men existed, and this particular green one came to be known as the Meiji Shrine Rubber Man, thanks to his appearance at said shrine. Like all photos of mythical creatures before it, it's not exactly very clear. 
And to be honest, to my eye, he doesn't even look green. It just looks like a guy in a coat with something on his head. Maybe. At any rate, Yamaguchi Bintaro, a famous name in the world of urban legends for his investigations and talks on them, was contacted by a woman who claimed to have the first photo ever taken of a rubber man. She was not only a regular at his shows, but apparently worked as a staff member for a brief period as well. And, in her own words, she was able to see the other side. She could see things that regular people couldn't, and in this case, that meant she could see rubber people too. Yep, that's another thing about them. Apparently, not everyone can see them. They're somewhat like spirits in that way, in that some people can see them and others can't. This woman claimed to have visited Meiji Shrine with her mother when she spotted this strange green rubber man standing nearby. When she pointed this out to her mother, however, her mother claimed she couldn't see anything. The figure was completely invisible to her. This jives with a later interview Ishizaka gave, in which he described the jolt he got whenever he saw a rubber man, because he has apparently seen several, which is similar to the feeling he gets when he sees a ghost. Anyway, the rubber man doesn't just get his name from his appearance though. According to the woman who took the picture, his entire body was wobbling and rippling, much like the infamous kunekune of legend. Would seeing a rubber man cause you to go insane, just like that wobbling creature? Well, apparently not, but it was certainly an unsettling sight at any rate. The woman took a picture of the creature with her cell phone, and then sent it to Yamaguchi, which is the same picture that was then published in Tokyo Sports, after Yamaguchi contacted them with the scoop. This explains the terrible quality, because it was taken with a 2007 cell phone. Of course. Now, how this woman was able to capture a creature on her 2007 phone that apparently can't even be seen by most people is up to you to figure out, I guess, because they never tried to explain it. She could see it, therefore she could capture it, I guess. I don't know. Either way, she claimed that his head was far too long to be human, and he was bent unnecessarily forward. Guess the weight of his long, long head weighed him down or something. The Tokyo Sports newspaper showed this picture to actor Ishizaka Koji and asked him what he thought of it, to which he replied, This looks just like the rubber man I saw, although the one I saw was paler. Once again, rubber man mania was all the rage, although not everyone was on board. One TBS radio presenter joked that it seemed only people with the name Koji could see them, being that both actors who first spoke about the creatures shared the same name. And a magazine writer also pointed out that the creatures looked an awful lot like the Kemu from Ultraman, which Ishizaka once starred in. Yamaguchi then interviewed Hikita Saya, a gravure idol who also claimed to have abilities that allowed her to see the supernatural, for the Naigai Times, another newspaper similar to Tokyo Sports in scope. During the interview, she claimed to have once seen an alien that looked just like the now infamous Meiji Shrine Rubber Man. It was in 1998, when she was still in elementary school. She was walking past a shrine in Narashino City, Chiba Prefecture, when she saw a glowing green figure standing in the shrine grounds. He looked just like what people referred to as Rubber Men today, although at the time she had never heard such a story, and the sight frightened her so much that she immediately ran away. As she got older, she realised it was likely not an alien because it wasn't wearing a spacesuit, and physically it resembled the rubber men that everyone was now talking about. It was also green in colour, which matched the most common rubber men seen out and about, just like the Meiji Shrine one. The fact she saw it at a shrine was also consistent with the Meiji Shrine version, leading some to believe that these odd yokai were perhaps somewhat religious at the very least. 
Hikitao was far from the only celebrity to talk about seeing a rubber man either. Why, even Araki Hirohiko, creator of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, spoke publicly of spotting one of the infamous rubber creatures. When he was out walking near the train station close to his home one day, he noticed two strange figures. They appeared to be an older sister and younger brother, around elementary school age, chasing each other on their bicycles. Yet as he got closer, he realised that they both had green skin that looked just like rubber. They were chatting like regular siblings and, other than their appearance, nothing about them stood out as especially odd. But what made this even stranger was the fact that nobody else around them seemed to react to their strange skin texture and colour, as though he was the only one who could see them. He initially kept this strange experience to himself, but after Ishizaka shared his strange experience with the green rubber man, he decided he should probably share his as well. The legend of the rubber man was also covered on the special December 22nd, 2018 episode of Beat Takeshi's Paranormal X-Files that covered various UFO and UMA sightings. It, of course, featured Ishizaka, who by this point was pretty much the most famous authority on the rubbery green creatures, as well as a man in a green costume that was basically ripped right from Ultraman. Because of course. Is this strange green rubber man a real yokai haunting the country? Well, I think you know my answer to that, but it's the story behind this creature and how it came to be so famous that personally interests me. You see, while most people consider Matoba Koji to be the first famous person to speak about personally seeing one, he wasn't the first person ever to speak of it. In fact, the topic came up because numerous viewers from around the country had sent their own stories into the show of seeing these rubber creatures in the wild. It seemed to be too good of a coincidence for the show to pass up on, and so, it became one of many topics spoken about on the episode. It was a nice coincidence, perhaps, that one of the speakers on that same episode had also seen one of these weird creatures. Huh. And before the Tokyo Sports article, celebrities referred to the rubber man as gomuo, with o being a masculine suffix that basically amounts to the same translation in English. But the writer of the Tokyo Sports article felt that the name didn't have enough impact, and so he refashioned it into Gomu Ningen instead, which gave it more of a One Piece appeal to the public. And that's the name that stuck. It more broadly covers the wide variety of rubber people that have been seen since then, after all. While rubber man mania isn't quite as fervent these days, you can still find reports and sightings on the creature in recent years, so it seems he, or they, are still out there somewhere. Visible only to some, and vibrating like a green kunekune, and paying their respects to the gods. You can't make this stuff up. But what did you guys think of this one? Do you have any similar legends in your own countries? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you again next time.